Hi, uh, this is the continuation of this Bendix uh, computer. As you can see, I have removed the cover of one output device. There are actually six read contacts and six diodes. There is a magnet in the center. The magnet covers the 50% of the central shaft. That means that at every moment, three read contacts are closed. This is the first part of the reverse engineering. It is not easy to do the reverse engineering of this kind of assembly. This is the final schematic diagram. You can see the six read contacts here. In parallel with each contact, there is a freewheeling diode. You can see that there are two power supply rails. One here, which is a negative rail, obviously, and the second one, which is a positive power supply rail. And there are three outputs, S1, S2, and S3. In one complete revolution, there are six steps here, one to six. Between each output and ground, you have a signal like that. The signal is positive half the time. And between two consecutive signals, there is a phase shift of 120 degrees. And if you consider the difference between two outputs, for example here, output number one minus output number two, you have something like that. So this is a pseudo sign signal. And of course, you have the same signal between S2 and S3 and between S1 and S3, but with a phase shift of 120 degrees. That system is actually a three-phase generator expected to be connected to an AC motor. I did the complete reverse engineering of this Bendix CPA24 computer. You can see on the screen the block diagram of this computer. I drew the schematics using a CAD tool. You can see here the ball resolver. One input is a speed input here. The speed input is provided using this AC motor with a variable speed. There is a gear train between the AC motor and the speed input of the ball resolver. The AC motor is driven using the main board here. The speed input is here, this is a square wave. The velocity of the shaft here is normally proportional to the input frequency. So inside the motor control board, there is the first divider by 8. And there is the second one, so the frequency is divided by 64. There is a logic circuit which permits to generate three signals here. These signals are fed to a power stage made with six power transistors. Between two lines, there is a pseudo sign signal, and these signals drive the AC motor. There are two power supplies, one at 27 volts and the second one at 64 volts. The ground of this board is connected to one pin of one connector. This pin should be connected to ground in order to activate the motor control board. And the second input of the ball resolver here is the heading input. The heading input is made using a servo control. This is a classic system. You can see the motor here connected to the shaft of the heading input. The reference winding of the motor is connected to the power supply input, 115 volts, 400 Hz. The command windings are connected to the servo amplifier. It is a small board. The input of the servo control amplifier is connected to the control transformer. The heading input is the stator of this central transformer. For the test, I will connect the synchro transmitter to these three lines here. So we can see that there are also two synchro transmitters which are mechanically attached to this shaft also. The one is a complete synchro transmitter. So we can see the three stator lines and the two lines for the rotor. During the reverse engineering, I have noticed that this winding is open. So this synchro transmitter doesn't work. Probably there is a problem with the brush contact of the rotor of the synchro transmitter. The second one is a little bit different. It is the same synchro transmitter, but only two lines are used. And these two lines are fed to an auto transformer, which permits to increase the voltage. I have calculated the ratio very closed to square root of three. So I don't know exactly the purpose of these two synchro transmitters, but I think that because of this transformer, these two synchro transmitters should be used together. So I think they are connected to another system to compute a particular thing. 
So we can see the two outputs on these lines. There is a three phase uh, supply for an AC motor. The frequency depends on the input frequency. So we can see that one point is connected to the ground. The second one, the power supply, is connected uh, to this voltage, which is connected to one pin of the connector. And uh, this line activates also a relay, this one here. So one contact is connected to the power supply, 115 volts, and the second one to the 27 volts DC voltage. I think that this relay permits to energize the indicator, but I am not sure. Okay, so let's see in details the different boards. First, the power supply board. There is nothing special. The main power supply is a plus 27 volts. It uses the classic regulation using this inner diode and this transistor as ballast. The output actually is connected to the ground, so the positive power supply is on that line here. There is another power supply which is not used for that device. The output is available on two pins of one connector, P1. The voltage is approximately 7 volts and there is a trimmer in series, so I don't know exactly the purpose of that thing. There is another power supply here which is superposed to the 27 volts in order to give a voltage of 64 volts. And there is another power supply, an AC power supply here, which is also available on the connector, so it is not used on that device itself. And there is also a trimmer in series. One line of the primary is connected to the 115 volts. The second one is connected to one pin of the connector. And there is also a resistor here. I don't know neither the purpose of that transformer. This is a circuit which permits to generate the signals for the AC motor, for the speed. So we can recognize on the top here the first divider, divider by 8. As you can see, so there are effectively six flip-flops in cascade, three for the prescalaire, and another divider by eight in order to generate six signals. These signals are fed to a logic circuit here. We can see, for example, this circuit is an OR gate with two inputs. This is an OR gate also with three inputs. So we can see here an OR gate and also an AND gate, which is provided by this transistor. So this is a combinatory logic in order to generate three signals here. These three signals are fed to a voltage follower. They are made with six TO3 transistors outside the board. The output of each buffer is connected to the AC motor. The last schematic is a servo amplifier. There is nothing special. There is a push-pull output stage. There is a capacitor which permits to tune the circuit to 400 Hz. And there is a driver stage using this transistor to N525. There is a capacitor here which permits also to tune this transformer to 400 Hz. So this permits to increase the sensitivity. And the input is here. The input is isolated from the rest using this transformer. So you can see that there is a voltage limiter on the input. So this permits to avoid the saturation. It seems that we have one or several faulty capacitors. There is a short circuit here. The resistance is 2 ohms approximately between these two points here. Okay, so this one is dead. The two others are okay, but I will change all of them. I am testing the heading function, and it seems that this motor is stuck. So I don't know if it is due to the motor itself, the train gear inside. This is the AC motor. The motor itself is here, and uh, there is a gear train. The ratio is indicated here. It is a very strange value. 
So I think that the gear train is stuck inside. Okay, I will try something. It can be dangerous. Yes, I think it is effectively totally stuck after so many years or decades. Okay, it can rotate now. Okay, look at that. I will reinstall the motor and probably this thing will work again. It is a good idea to have the shaft on that side because in that case you can effectively you can try to rotate that thing and the torque is much higher inside uh, the train gear okay you can see the backlash system so you need to insert the two gears by applying a small torque on the second gear here and you push everything like that i don't know there is a mistake second gear is not in contact Okay. Okay, so this is better. Should be okay. It is not totally in front. I try to optimize that thing, but okay, it is better. Okay, so let's see. I have connected this synchro transmitter. Look at that, it works, more or less. Okay, the heading works. Okay, I have connected the input to the function generator. This one here. Currently, the frequency is 4.4 kHz approximately. You can see the rotation of the motor for the speed here. And you can see also the rotation of the output encoders here. This one and this one. The speed and the direction of rotation depend on the heading.
Ok, I will divide by 10 the input frequency, 440 Hz. So let's try to divide by 10 one more time, 44 Hz. You can see that the motor still rotates. Four point four kilohertz. We can see the magnet on the top encoder here. You can see on the screen the signals across the three windings of the AC motor. It is far from perfect, but it works. You can see the phase shift between the first signal, this one, and the third one. It is not perfect first because there is a division by eight, so the phase shift can be only a multiple of 45 degrees and not 60 degrees. That's all for this vintage Bendix navigation computer. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.